idea of service before self. When you choose to join the armed forces, everybody is a deployer. You're making that choice then. You're at the uh, 180th uh, Fighter Wing, which is the uh, Toledo uh, Air National Guard. In 1952 to 1955, we flew F-51s out of Akron, Canton. We were transitioning from F-51s to F-84s, and the runway was too short. Uh, so we prepared for changes to move to Toledo. In 92, we started flying F-16s here at Toledo. The F-16s we have here are called Block 42s. Uh, the, uh, the ones we've got out here were built in the 1989-1990 ballpark. So it sounds like they're really old. As it turns out, a better measure for an airplane is how many hours you've flown it. And these F-16s are some of the youngest in the whole world. It's one of the airplanes that uh, is still a frontline fighter. So for example, uh, when jets go to Afghanistan, there are F-16s that are fighting uh, over there now. And active duty, guard and reserve all mixed together. The Air National Guard is uh, basically a component of uh, the Air Force and its support to uh, the active, active component. What existed yesterday uh, was essentially three Air Forces. You had an active duty Air Force, you have an Air Force Reserve, and you had an Air National Guard. Today, and what we're working towards, is a concept called the total force. And in the total force, we like to think of it as an air force with three components. So you can actually execute a federal mission, a state mission, with both full-time and part-time airmen. Is our goal what we're transitioning to. The vast majority of our folks are part-time, which means that they're going out and they're doing whatever their full-time jobs are during the week. And then uh, at least once a month or so, they'll come out here and switch gears, put on a military uniform, and start working on, uh, on, on the jet. It's broken down into four groups. You essentially have the operations groups, which is what you would think of the pilots and those that support uh, the immediate pilots. You have the maintenance group, uh, which are those who turn wrenches and work specifically on the airplanes to support the, uh, the, the flying mission. You also have the mission support group, which is anything from the cops to fire, uh, to civil engineering, uh, to any of the support crew contracting services that we have here uh, on base. And then you have the medical group, uh, which essentially is exactly what it sounds like. I'm the maintenance group commander here at Toledo. Been here uh, about 14 years. Before that, I was active duty for about 17 years. Uh, and I was uh, a pilot on 911. I was the flight lead of the first two airplanes that took off that day. I can remember being in a briefing room uh, getting ready to brief my flight for the day and right around that same time uh, the, uh, the phone rang in our, in our ops desk. But the voice on the other end of the line says we need you to get two airplanes airborne and at the time I, I thought to myself do you know even who you're talking to? This is Toledo. We don't have any jets on alert status here. I don't think you're calling the right people. And he said, no, no, we need you. So uh, I grabbed another guy on the way out the door and said, hey, come on, we're, uh, we're gonna go take off. And so we started patrol over, the, over Ohio around that time. What we talk about as, as uh, F-16 pilots is eventually you get to the point where you're no longer really flying the airplane, you're wearing it. You become so um, kind of ingrained in the airplane and everything becomes habit and uh, instinctive. Most people would think, oh, the pilots come to work, they fly for an hour and then they go home. Realistically speaking, pilots come to work, uh, they brief, they fly for about between an hour and two hours, depending on the mission they're going to do, and then they talk about what they, what they just did. Just the flying mission alone, whether you're practicing for combat or flying a practice alert mission, uh, that takes about an eight-hour day. And then you have the support personnel, whether you're in the maintenance group, the mission support group, or the medical group, uh, that support that mission on, uh, on essentially on a daily basis. Militarily, Toledo sits right smack dab in, the, in, a, in a very significant part of the country. Sixty percent of the American people live within five or six hundred miles of us here. So it's a major geographic center, um, strategic importance from that perspective. I would say critically important, not only for the, the federal mission of protection of the homeland and defending really the northern tier when you look at who would do that job, 
but also from a state perspective too in the defense support of the civil authorities. A citizen airman really connects the community with the military. And when an Air National Guard unit mobilizes, that really affects the community. They're, they're police officers and, they're, and they are mayors and they are, you know, they're, they're the leaders in their communities too. So it's a, that's one of the great things about the National Guard is we are community-based militia and our impact to the local community isn't just military, it's, it's who we are when we leave the base. It's, it's who we are in your community.